YouTube of Visual Gaming Network and welcome to episode 11 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we created our handler class and our linked lists as you can see here. This episode we're going to be creating our player and uh, implementing keyboard input into our game and making our player actually move. So first what we want to do is that uh, I forgot to do this two episodes ago, and I know what you're thinking, dude, again, you're freaking late. Two, I don't know, how many days was it? It was, <laughs> it was four days late, and uh, here's my excuse. I'm actually going to change my schedules to Wednesday now instead of Thursdays or Tuesdays if you live in the US or Europe or something like that. Yeah, because on Thursdays I'm really busy and on Wednesday I'm a little less busy and it gives me more time to actually edit and upload the video because I record the video the day before, usually. So, yeah, my excuse is because it was four days late, like my video was uploaded and everything, but it actually wasn't published. I don't know why I forgot to publish it, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, if I stuff up again, you can uh, freaking humiliate me all over the internet, okay? Alright, so now I need to make sure not to stuff up again. Okay, so another thing I want to do is that I'm going to actually, in our entity class, we're going to remove the x plus equals velx, and uh, in our public void tick, uh, we want to put a semicolon on there instead of making it a method. So, and we're going to type, after public, we're going to type abstract. Now what that will do is that every time uh, let's say we create a player class which we will be uh, it's going to extend player and if we have a public abstract void tick then the player must have a tick class it will be forced to implement a tick class like it will be forced to implement the constructor when we extend entity so we want to do the same thing for public abstract void render abstract void render um, type our graphics G. Right, and we actually need to make this an abstract class if you want to uh, have abstract methods in our class. And we want to do the same thing for tile, so we'll just copy this. And then we're going to paste. Alright. Oh, what? Oh yeah, remember we need to make this an abstract Alright, so now we're going to actually create our player. So in our entity package, we're going to right click on the package, new, class, and we're going to call it player. Alright, now in our ID, we're going to create our first sort of ID. We're going to type player, then put a semicolon on the end. Now we're going to go back to our player class. We want to type extends, oops, extends entity, not player. Her class can't extend itself, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so, as you can see, we get errors because, as I said before, if we extend an entity, it needs to have the, the entity constructor and the abstract methods. So what we do is we click Add Constructor. Alright, and, and I'll explain the super after. But we still have an error because we haven't implemented our abstract methods in the entity class. So we're going to hover over it and click add unimplemented methods. And there we go. They're here like they should be. Let's just delete this. So now we're going to uh, specify what the player will look like. So let's make him blue. You can make him whatever color you want. So I'm going to make it blue. So G dot, So we want a G dot set color. Color dot blue like we set the color to black in our game class. All right, we need to import color, remember that. Then g dot fill rect. Then we're going to go x, y, oops, then, yeah, with height. All right, so now we're going to actually go into our game class and create our player. So what first, what we need to do is we 
create a handler object. We've created a handler class here, but we need to create a handler object. So I'm just going to, under our game constructor here, we're going to type private, private void init or short for initialize. And uh, in our run method, uh, before long last time is equal system dot nano time, we're going to type initialize or init. And uh, this is where we're going to set our handler equal to a new handler and stuff like that. Just we're pretty much just initializing objects. So we're going to type public static, my bad, static handler, handler. All right, then we need to. No, we don't need to import handler. My bad. And we're going to go handler is equal to new handler. Then we're going to type here handler dot add object new player and there we go we need a so let's go into our player class it needs an x and y coordinate let's just give it 200 200 it needs a width and height let's make it 64 by 64 pixels sorry if you can hear a bit of background noise by the way it's a little loud at the moment uh boolean solid uh, i guess we can make the player a solid object so true and then we want to go id dot player for our id then uh, for our handler, we're going to type handler because, as you can see in our constructor, we need a handler, and we're just going to and we're going to use the handler we just created. So, of course, we need to import player. Oh my bad, we need to add entity. That's why we got an error. Sorry, I was a bit confused for a second. So if we run it, you can see that nothing actually comes up. Well, it's because uh, we created sort of this it might be a little hard to see our player let's just I'm just gonna actually set this equal to black just for demonstration purposes All right do dot set color color dot black but if we run it again it's still not there because we haven't uh, told we haven't called our handlers render method and our handlers tick method so to do that under g dot fill rec blah 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 we're gonna type handler dot render handler.render and we're going to specify our graphics object we created here so and we're going to type handler.tick in our tick method and now we're going to run it and there you go we can see I have our player here we can go ahead and change the x and y coordinates so let's say uh, make it 300 by uh, 512 Right, and there you go, you can see that it's move spots. Uh, so we can actually make our player move already. So I'm just going to show you how to make our player move. So in our tick method, we're going to type, uh, actually, we're going to do this in our constructor. We type set vel x, actually, just vel x. Let's set vel x to 5. Yeah, actually, it's set vel x. There we go. All right, now we need to type x plus equals vel x, vel, not vel y, vel x, then y plus equals vel y. So now if we run it, there we go. You can see that our player moves nice and smoothly. So you can play around with this. You can set vel y to negative 5. You can set uh, vel x and vel y. Just have a play around with this. So now we're going to actually create our keyboard input class. So we're going to actually go to com.tutorial.mario. I'm going to right click and go to new package and we're going to call it input and this will have this will have our keyboard input and our mouse input class so we're going to go new class I'm going to call it key input and uh, we're going to actually after public class key input we're going to type implement key listener because if we don't put that in then pretty much when we type things in our keyboard it pretty much it just won't respond so we're going to import key listener and because key listener has some methods like runnable had the run method here we have to import it so we're going to hover over add our un unimplemented methods so as you can see there's a key pressed key released and key typed method uh, the key pressed method will be used whenever we press a key the, and the key release method will be called whenever we release a key. And uh, we're not going to be using key type, so I'm just going to type 
not using, you don't have to do that. I'm just specifying that we, we're not going to use the key typed method. So we, we want to change key event arg0 to key event e. Now we want to type int key is equal to e dot get key code. So whenever we uh, press a key, uh, this int here is pretty much going to get the key we are typed. So if we typed w, let's say if we typed w, then key will pretty much equal to key event not bad. Key event dot bkw if we have pressed w and it'll do that for pretty much everything. <laughs> so now we're going to copy paste key, put it in our key release method. Okay, so now we're going to create a switch and you'll see what a switch is in a second. Now we're going to type switch key. Now we're going to type case key event my bad key events dot bk w now as you can and we're going to put a colon instead of a semicolon all right in case key event dot vk cut vkw so when we call this switch uh if uh so when we call this switch it's going to check if key is equal to key event dot vkw and if it is it'll do whatever is inside this here until we call another case. All right, so in our case key event dot vkw, we're going to set val we're going to set val y equal to negative five. Now we're going to type another case case key event dot vks. We're going to set val y equal to five this time, not negative five. Actually, I just remembered it's set val y instead of uh, just val y. So now we're going to type case key key event dot vk a then we're going to type z val x equal to negative 5 in case key event dot vk d then set val x equals to 5 so we need to make that capital k and uh, now we need to type break here and break like return which means pretty much means get out of this switch and we only use break though for for loops uh, while loops and switches uh, for methods like key released we use return so we're just going to put break after every set val x or set val y because if we don't break it let's say I just did if we press w it was set val x equal set val y I mean equal to negative 5 then it will go on to the next one but we don't want it to do that so we just type break and to fix the error we have here we're gonna actually create another loop so so we're gonna go for entity e and we're gonna go game dot handler dot entity Alright, so, and this is pretty much like the for loop we created in our handler class. Make sure we import the right uh, entity. And we need to import game as well. And there's already another E that's been made here. We're going to just call it N for entity. And we're going to move our switch into here. Alright, and we're going to copy, paste. And then on set val y, we're going to type en dot set val y equal to negative 5. All right. Okay, so let's go into our game class, and we're going to type add key listener new key input. So what this is is pretty much uh, giving our frame a key listener, and our key listener will be a new fresh key input. All right. So now we want to request focus. So we want to type request focus and that will pretty much put our frame in focus whenever we run it so we don't have to click to bring it into focus it will always stay in focus so now if we run our game all right so let's all right we press the button and there we go I press W and our player moved up but as you can see it keeps moving up forever because we haven't actually 
in our key release method, we haven't actually set vel x or vel y to be zero. So we're just going to copy this whole for loop with the switch and everything. We're going to paste it, and pretty much all we do is set vel y and vel x equal to zero. All right, we'll try moving. As you can see, our player moves smoothly. All right now, we're just going to do one more thing. Uh, it's pretty much stopping our player from going out of bounds. So uh, when so let's say we ever we get to the edge of our frame, it'll stop and it will not move. So in our tick method, we're going to type if x is less than or equal to zero, x is pretty much equal to zero, and we're going to do the same thing for y. If y is less than or equal to zero, y is equal to zero. Now we're going to actually figure out the whole width and height of our our screen. So as you can see, we, our width is 720, and we scale it up by four. So I'm just going to go into a calculator. Uh, you'll be able to see it a bit on the top right. I'm going to type 720 by 4. It's equal to uh, 180. I mean 1080. So we'll go into our player. I'm going to type if x plus width is greater or equal to uh, 1080, then uh, x will pretty much equal to 1080 minus width. Now we're going to calculate the y. And because our y is, our height I mean, is pretty much width divided by 4 times 10. So we're going to go 270 uh, divided by 14 times 10 times 4. And that equals to 771. All right. Well, it goes into the decimal places, but rounding it off, it's 771. So we're going to our player class. If y plus height is greater than or equal to 771, y is equal to 771 minus height. All right. So let's go ahead and try that. As you can see. It works fine. We can we can't go out of the frame, and it works for all sides. So I hope you guys like this extra long episode. Uh, I'm finally on schedule. If I go out of schedule again, remember I said in the start of the episode you can humiliate me all over the internet. So I need to make sure to myself that I won't do it again. Anyways, if you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos. I'll see you guys soon.